Bryce Young, what have you done to the Panthers organization? You got people that don't like you. You got people that still support you, but they don't know which way to go, man. Um, if you just look at those highlights, it's, it's tough to look at. And I know a lot of those highlights, I put the blame on you because there's no excuses going into 2024, man. It's your man, C. Dougie here. What's up, Dub? Man, I got my guy, Uncle Quan from the Panthers Experience joining us. We're going to talk about Bryce Young. A lot of people say, oh, we support Bryce. We don't put blame on Bryce. This is the video where you're going to hear that we're not – we're not, we're not giving any excuses. Bryce, you have to put up or shut up, man. Again, last year was definitely tough. Frank Wright getting fired. Thomas Brown not being the offensive coordinator that we needed. Um, you look at the offensive line giving up 63-plus sacks. It was just an ugly year for the Carolina Panthers. But that page is now closed. That book is put on the shelf. It's time for 2024, man. But I can't wait to definitely get into it with my guy, Uncle Quan to tell you guys there's no more excuses for Bryce Young. Go ahead and tell the people what's up, Uncle Quan. What's up, everybody? What be going on, man? It's your boy Q, a.k.a. Uncle Quan. Make sure you guys hit that like button on your way in, man. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another video on the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. Yes, sir. Dave Canales knows what is at stake. Bryce Young is his quarterback. Bryce Young is attached to his longevity of his job. Just as you can hear this clip right here, what Dave Canales says about Bryce. You got yeah. to see Bryce twice a year. I know you're coaching your own offense, yeah. but kind of what, how about your thoughts when you're sitting there on the sideline watching him on the field, kind of what impressed you, maybe what he needs to get better at? Yeah, what impressed me about him to start off is just the courage of the guy. Right. So, like, it would be play before he just gets smoked. Right. You know, very next play, steps up in the pocket, rips a 15, 20-yard end cut, you yeah. know, under duress, and it was like, and his demeanor was such that, like, the play before didn't even happen. Right. Um. And then I have to say on the other side of that, like, hey, how about let's not be so courageous at times? Yeah. And he he does have that mechanism where he'll get rid of the ball, right. you know, but as he's going through his progressions, just the decisiveness, you know, just the the intelligence of the footwork, marrying with the concept, like just the year two improvement, the basic year two leaps that guys make from their rookie year to their second year. I've seen a bunch of coverages. I've seen a bunch of exotic pressures, you know, I've seen what an NFL pass rush looks like, you know, and that being able to build off of that tape, you know, where it's him doing it, you know, it's um, it's going to be really important for us going forward. But, you know, from from a just from as I got to finish kind of my work and then go and right. watch what was happening there, you know, I just I just like to take the pressure off of the quarterback to just be a part of what they're doing offensively instead of trying to be a feature of it. That canals is basically saying he believes in Bryce. He's going to his second year. He knows how to read defenses. He knows coverages. He knows depth of routes that his receivers are supposed to be at. Like Dave Canales says, he needs Bryce to be one of 11 on the offensive side of the ball. But to be one of 11 on the um, offensive side of the ball, what did Dan Morgan do? With the problems of the offensive line, he went and spent $150 million to help protect Bryce Young. He went and made a trade for Deontay Johnson, trading away the player that we were going to cut and Deontay Johnson for um, a later pick in the draft and was still able to get a wide receiver um, that was not happy in the situation he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then you go into the draft and you draft um, the number one running back in Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. Then you add another uh, wide receiver in Xavier Leggett. Then you go get the number two tight end in Javante Sanders. Everything that Bryce needs is at his disposal. There's no more excuses, Bryce. I can't, I can't cover you. Um, Quan can't cover you. All the Bryce lovers, everybody supports you, cannot cover you. You have to come out in 2024 and prove your haters wrong. Prove the people that said you are not the number one pick. You are the wrong pick. The CJ Stroud lovers that are still um, jockeying for CJ Stroud to be our quarterback. Even the number one quarterback in Carolina history is already doubting you. It's time for you to stand on 10 toes down and prove that you are the right pick and you just were not in the right situation. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, have some new pieces, um, and now it's, um, you know, now it's on us to to put the work in, to to build the chemistry, to get the reps on the field, and to make it translate. Um, you know, I'm grateful the guys that are coming in. They all have, um, you know, really good work ethics, great attitudes, great outlooks. Um, you know, we all want the same thing. We all want to win. We all want to, um, you know, contribute to winning um, in whatever capacity we can. Uh, give all for the team. So, um, you know, we're all excited for that. It's always good to just have new juice, have 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 different juice, and you know, now it's on us to to do the work to make it translate. Speaking on Deontay Johnson, man, Deontay Johnson was a pivotal addition to this offseason, man. 
Deontay Johnson was top three in separation. And we had questions about our receivers getting separation just last season. Whether you, whether you blame Bryce or not, these receivers struggled with separation all season long. So you bring in Deontay Johnson and you immediately answer the questions at separation. I mean, Deontay Johnson got a quarterback now that can hit you immediately after your break. Bryce Young throws with heavy anticipation. And just like Doug mentioned earlier, he knows the depth of his route. So if him and Deontay Johnson are building this chemistry in the offseason, it's only going to be a matter of time to what we see can come into fruition here in Carolina with Deontay Johnson and Bryce Young. Yeah, like Quan said, Deontay Johnson, whenever we got the trade news late that night, nobody thought that we'll be able to bring a wide receiver via free agency at that caliber. Deontay Johnson, regardless of the drops, the tantrums on the field, play-wise, he reminds me of a famous Panther as well as Steve Smith. A lot of people don't allude or look at what Steve Smith did. Yes, he was not a cancer, but you want that type of dog wide receiver that demands the ball and that can actually produce for your quarterback. You know if you throw him the ball, he's going to be at that particular spot or be there for you, just like Adam Thielen. Yes, we did get Adam Thielen, and we still have him here. He was not supposed to be the number one option last year. You did have, you know, a TMJ. You did have a DJ Chart. Um, you did have Jonathan Mingo. But with Adam Thielen now having a Deontay Johnson, then again, you have a Xavier Leggett. Then you have a Jonathan Mingo in his second year. The wide receiver core looks totally different for Bryce. There's no question that he can't say, oh, I don't have any separation or the guy didn't separate. Bryce, you can't go to the podium and say that, which you have not. But we know how you feel. You took most of the blame, but you cannot blame this on your wide receivers anymore. The wide receiver room is night and day for the Carolina Panthers. Speaking of Xavier Leggett, we look at it. A lot of people had um, different perspectives on the wide receiver that they wanted. But Xavier Leggett let us know that, hey, Carolina wants me. I want to represent the Carolinas. I'm from Mullen, South Carolina. I want to be a Panther. And Quan and myself had done um, several videos on Xavier Leggett. Shout out my guy for doing a film study. If you have not checked that film study out on Xavier Leggett, you're missing out. Go over to the Panthers experience with Uncle Quan. He goes into depth about Xavier Leggett. It's more of what he can do for Bryce that he can't do for Bryce. He can take a screen to the house. He can, he, he, he's a bit by the receiver that you can throw the ball up to and he can get that you got Moss type catch for you. Then again, it takes the pressure off of Adam Thielen and a Devontae, I mean, a Deontay Johnson, which we're hoping Jonathan Mingo can look a, a night and day for himself going into year two. But Xavier Leggett was a good piece for us. I understand the fifth year option, but I look at whenever your head coach and your GM are headstrong on a player and they know what they want for this player. That's what Xavier Leggett is going to bring for Bryce Young. Facts, man. I mean, you said it best. Xavier Leggett, he brings that big body receiver to the Carolinas, man. Somebody that can really high point the ball. Like you said, we did a film study over there at the Panthers Experience, and it was a lot of fun watching this guy's film, man. Again, a guy who really, who really takes pride in that 50 50 ball is going to come down with him. More than not, man, uh, this is a guy who actually helps us spread out our offense and help us uh, spread the ball around. When you got a separation guru like Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen playing the slot and on the other side of the receiver position, you got Xavier Leggett who really doesn't have to do too much. Like we talked about on the film, you can get him some off-man coverage, get him some motions going on throughout the backfield and uh, throughout the line of scrimmage. And just really give this guy some matchups that he might like in, uh, throughout games. And uh, if he's one on one, you can throw it up to him. That 50 50 ball, once we said, uh, like we said before, it's going to come down with him. He also has that breakaway speed. Like Doug said, if you give him the ball in the screen game, he can take one to the crib. So Xavier Leggett brings something different. You have to account for him, but you also have to account for, again, that separation guru, Deontay Johnson, and Adam Thielen, who's really well with intermediate routes across the field. So, you got to pick your poison with this receiver group. Again, there's no excuses for Bryce Young, man. No excuses. And one thing that um, Quan and I have said is they really get can learn from two great separators, regardless of how old Adam Thielen is. And with Deontay Johnson and his issues, they can get space. They know how to find holes in defense. They know how to separate from their corner or who's opposite on the line of them. That's one thing that I cannot wait. Once they break after minicamp and it's for training camp, 
that he's going to be able to actually get hands-on training with two veterans. Regardless of how you feel about him, both of these veterans are great in separation and finding a hole in the defense. And I can't wait to see Xavier Leggett in person doing training camp to see what he's able to learn from two vets, man. But a big issue that we do have to talk about is Austin Corbin and Bryce Young's relationship. Um, people know how I feel about Bradley Bozeman. Great community guy, great family guy, but on the field, he was getting used and abused, slapped around, pushed back in Bryce's um, pocket and did not look good. And with a center, your center is supposed to be your anchor. One thing that you also look at, shout out to Austin Corbett, whenever he was healthy, he was the one that was pointing out blocks. He was the one that was making the adjustments on the line, not your center. That's the one thing I will get Austin Corbett credit for. He knows how to recognize defenses on a defensive line. The only thing that I am worried about is that knee. With us not getting a center in the draft, yes, we got one from an undrafted free agent out of Oklahoma. How is the relationship with Bryce Young and Austin Corbett? Can we really trust Austin Corbett being better than Bradley Bozeman? It has to be because if not, all fails. Because again, with Bryce Young and his height deficiencies, he has to step up in the pocket. Yes, you address the guard position, but you better bank on it. You better bet your bottom dollar that Austin Corbett is going to pay it out. Because if he does not, this whole experiment with Austin Corbett playing center is going to be a bust. And again, if it's a bust, Bryce Young is going to be at the forefront of that bus. But I do think, um, and I do believe in Dan Morgan and Dave Canales. Again, I just don't trust the knee. I'm hoping that the doctors have given Austin Corbett a clean bill of health. But again, if Austin Corbett does pan out, along with, I know how Quan's going to say, Icky Quanu, he does not trust. But when you have a Damian Lewis and then you have a Robert Hunt and a Taylor Moten, that offensive line is, is solidified and sufficient. There should not be 63 sets given up from this offensive line. Bryce, you better not hold on to that ball long because you're going to have the time that you need. You're a precise thrower that throws it in right where it needs to be. You're a spot on thrower. And if your offensive line gives you the time, I don't want you to see you back there holding the ball for five seconds when Dave Canales said get the ball out in two, two seconds. So again, with Austin Corbett, I do think the relationship with him and Bryce will be on display during training camp and when we have preseason games, but also when we have that joint practice. I will say this, man. Austin Corbett being our starting center, it got a lot of red flags to me because Austin Corbett is, again, battling injury issues that we've had last season and the season before. And then you also have our backup center, Brady Christensen, who was also battling with injuries just this past season. So, this this has a lot of red flags to me. Why I don't understand why we didn't go get a center in the draft. Um, I think this will come back to hunt us, knock on wood. But again, this has a lot of red flags. So you don't address the center in the uh, in the off season. I don't know, man. It, it, again, it could come back to bite you. But they did add the two big guards. They paid the big bucks for Robert Hunt and uh, Lewis. And I think that was right uh, the right move too. You got to get the interior so Bryce Young can have a step up lane, which he definitely didn't. We rotated with, between several guards just this last season with uh, several injuries. So, um, I mean, you answered that question right there with the guards, but your left tackle is still a question with pass blocking. And then you still have um, your center who, you know, is battling injuries and stuff. So, I don't know, man. This this offensive line, did it improve? Yes. Does it still have holes? I, yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you, Quan. I couldn't say it any better how you closed it. It did get better, but it's a lot of holes. And one thing that I'm going to say, a lot of people say, oh, does the op optimistic Panther? No, I'm not. I just speak the facts. And the facts is Austin Corbin and Bryce are going to be the reason why this offense either flourishes or it fails. Because again, Bryce needs to step up in the pocket. He was not able to do that when you had a K Maze and you had a... Um, um, I forgot the guy that we got from Seattle off the street. And then you bring in Zavala, which was a rookie. He was not supposed to come in right away. Again, this offensive line is, it is improved, but it's a big question mark. A lot of people are worried about the wide receivers. Again, if you cannot protect your quarterback, it doesn't matter what receiver you bring in there. A receiver can do everything in their power, but if your quarterback cannot get the protection that he needs, which people think he was able to have, then what is what? What can you really say? So for me, I really think the offensive line has in, has improved. 
I do appreciate Dan Morgan knowing that you went in the trenches on the offense and defensive side of the ball. You spent the money. Again, Bryce, no excuse. No excuse at all, man. And when you go into these first four games, you have New Orleans Saints at, at um, as our um, season opener in NOLA, division game. You have to start out 1-0. We cannot start behind the ball again, just like last year when Quan and myself were at our home opener against New Orleans Saints. You can't do that. Then you have, you have your home opener with the LA Chargers. Jim Harbaugh's back to the NFL, do, um, back to the NFL, coming with Justin Herbert and his Michigan Wolverines that he drafted coming into Charlotte for our home opener. Then you go back to the West Coast for a game with the Raiders, with Coach Pierce, you have De uh, Devontae Adams, you have Garner Minshew, a coach who they believe in and they gave him the job because of the culture that he built in Las Vegas. Then you have Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals coming for our second home game. Those first four games is the only thing I'm giving you, Bryce Young. That's all I'm giving you. I can I can't back you up. If you come out here and wet the bed, you're 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 looking worse than you did last year. You're still looking confused. You're still not looking like you know what's going on. That is going to cause an issue for me because I bet you up. I said you didn't have the help. Quan said you didn't have the help. You have to show up and shut everybody up. If you don't, then you're possibly going to be benched. I hate saying it. I don't believe they will, but you're possibly looking at a benching. You have all the Panther content creators that are split right now that's saying that, yes, they see that you, you know, you built more muscle. Yes, your throwing arm looks bigger. Yes, your, your, your lower extremities look bigger, but it's all on you. It's on the shoulders of you. You are the captain of the offense, Bryce. You have to take control of this offense, like Dave Canales said. They want you to be more vocal. They want you to be that leader that you were at the University of Alabama. When you won the Heisman, you have to do more. You have to do more. So that's what I have for the first four games. I need you to show that you are the right quarterback of the future for the Carolina Panthers. Hey, I'll say this, man. That first four games is a tough stretch. You got two top five quarterbacks within the first four weeks. So off rip, Bryce Young is going to have to deal with a lot of pressure, especially going on the road to a division division rival team in New Orleans Saints. It's a tough situation to play in in uh, that dome, man. So we lost last year. You know, saying it didn't didn't really have a, a, a great outcome. But I do feel like this year is a definitely a new a new season, new regime. So let's see how this can work out with this new offense. Let's see how Canales can call call up an offense and. Um, Depending on how that first game go is definitely going to determine how the rest of those three games go in the first four. So you got the Chargers at home to open up. The Chargers early on in the season, you could catch them slipping and try to learn their new offense with uh, Joe, John Harbaugh. So that could be a, a system that we could catch early. Maybe get a dub there uh, at home, man, hopefully. So you go to Raiders. That was going to be a tough one. You got Max Crosby on the other side, who's a, 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 tower, a skyscraper compared to Bryce Young. So... That was going to be a tough game, but I do believe that we do have a chance in that game as well. Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals is going to be a tough game. Joe Burrow being the top two quarterbacks in the league, man. So, I, I don't know. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, you're catching them pretty early in the season where they're probably, probably going to be healthy. This is going to be a tough game, man. It's going to be a tough game for Bryce Young. Um, but we're going to see just how we handle, just how we handle adversity earlier in the uh, season. So, yeah, man, like we said, Bryce, if you see the thumbnail and you've been listening all throughout, you have no more excuses, my guy. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're our quarterback. I still believe in you, but it's time to put up or shut up. No more excuses. Prove your doubters wrong. Show us what, what, what you believe in yourself, that you can lead this team. Regardless, we're not looking at wins because we're not, you know, a uh, 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 two-win team going to a uh, 10-plus. If we do it, we do it. But, hey, I need you to take one day at a time to get better so we can see which, what reason why we traded up from the ninth pick to go to number one with Chicago Bears and we drafted you as being in the future quarterback the Carolina Panthers. So there you have it, man. I appreciate my guy Uncle Quan pulling up with me, man, talking about our guy Bryce Young. But... Also, let's help my Gonko Kwan get the 2K, man. We got a special giveaway for you guys. Once he hits that 2K mark, go ahead and tell him what we got for him, Uncle Kwan. 
Yes, sir. So you get a chance to win one of three free copies of the new College 2025 football game that is coming out July 19th, man. So don't want to miss the details. All you got to do is hit that notification hit that notification bell on Panthers Experience so you don't miss the details on the live. It's going to be trivia style, so all you got to do is pull up. We're going to ask one Panthers question, one college question, and then we're going to be we're going to do like a pop culture kind of question. So stay tuned. Definitely hit the notification bell so you don't want to uh, miss the video. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. I'm so happy for my guy. Like I said, we do this for you guys. We appreciate the support that you guys have shown us over the years. Well, over the year and going into our second year, um, just the support, the comments, the likes, the subscribers. Again, this is giving back to you guys. Without you guys, there would not be a C. Dougie and Uncle Quan. So this is just a gratitude for us. As you guys know, um, I'm about to go on military leave. I would not be able to do any content for the month of June. We'll be back in July. But shout out to my guy, Uncle Quan. He definitely will hold it down. Um, we also got other Pan Panther content creators. I don't want to miss anybody, but they will keep you guys in the loop, getting ready for mandatory mini camp here in June again. Support all Panther content creators. We all have different perspectives. We may think different. We may do things different, but we're doing this for you guys. We want to be the, the boots on the ground for you guys. We don't want the ESPNs. We don't want the NFL networks. We want to give you guys actual accurate content where we're telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So again, as always, as we say over here, what's up, Doug? We definitely appreciate the support. We want everybody to stay safe, stay blessed. One love. Peace.